Pablo Ganguly for the surgical manager. Good evening, everybody. My respected teachers and chairpersons, Bengali Urology Society, my friends, my colleagues. The etiopathogenesis and the medical management of overactive bladder has been elucidated by Shaptarshi and Otun already. So I will take up the surgical treatment. Now, at the very outset, we need to know who are those patients who really require a surgical treatment for an overactive bladder because there are now uh, uh, there are uh, uh, very less number of people who actually need a, a, a surgical treatment beyond a medical treatment. So these people, uh, this uh, phenotype of the disease is known as refractory overactive bladder. So when patients do not improve with first and second line of treatment for overactive bladder, they are now considered refractory. The third line treatment, the third tier treatment actually includes neuromodulation of the nerves controlling bladder function and neuro uh, and, and uh, uh, chemo denervation. So there are uh, three distinct uh, neuromodulation therapy which is available uh, with uh, chemo uh, denervation. These are either PTNS or peripheral tibial nerve stimulation, sacral neuromodulation and intradetrusor uh, chemotherapy or drug injection. Now uh, the most important thing here is uh, there is no definite order in which the patient may require this thing and there is uh, no rule where uh, that can be applied uh, for the requirement of this drug. So each patient has to be individualized for uh, use of one of the therapy. Having said that, not only neuromodulation, but there are some obvious causes for overactive bladder, that is the secondary overactive bladder. These are essential treatments, like uh, a secondary overactive bladder in prosthetic obstruction, and in urogenital prolapse. But the importance here is uh, we need to remember that even after uh, a good surgery, uh, around 30% patients with overactive bladder will not improve, although their obstruction will be relieved. 30% will improve after some time, and 30% will get better immediately after surgery. The last resort, of course, is an augmentation cystoplasty and diversion but I am yet to encounter a patient who has a primary OAB who has required an augmentation cystoplasty. Now uh, if we go through the uh, overactive bladder guidelines uh, of the American Neurological Association we will find that uh, uh, there are some riddles associated with the third tier treatment. The uh, the patients who will get an, an, an Botox therapy should be willing to perform a CIC. The patients who are having uh, a PTNS, who are choosing a PTNS, should be willing to visit the uh, urologist's office very frequently. And the patients who are having sacral neuromodulation must be willing to have a full-fledged surgical therapy. Now, uh, a brief description of uh, Botox or interdetrusor una botulotoxin. So, una bonte is, uh, has received FDA approval in 2011 for neurogenic detrusor overactivity and for refractory OAB in 2013. Uh, una bonte prevents exocytosis of neurotransmitters into the synapse by proteolytic cleavage of SNAP25. It's a protein complex. Uh, what essentially this line tells is it actually prevents the release of acetylcholine at it uh, 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 at, at the uh, uh, myoneural junction. 
The results are very encouraging. The median duration of uh, effect of a single uh, Botox injection uh, is uh, 7.6 months and uh, durable quality of life improvements is seen uh, for around 3.5 years. Uh, the neurogenic OAB patients show significant improvement in bladder storage symptoms with similar increase in maximum systematic capacity of around 160 cc in six weeks follow-up. The most important adverse effects are uh, an uh, urinary tract infection, hematuria and of course uh, urinary retention. Uh, I will tell more about that in the second slide. So there are uh, efforts. Uh, to improve the drug delivery system of uh, onabotulotoxin uh, in patients because uh, uh, if we think if we can apply just for intravesical installation the uh, unavolu, uh, uh, this uh, botox will not work if you leave it there it will not work you have to reach it up to the uh, um, uh, myoneural junction so there are efforts to improve the drug delivery systems. Uh, it can be combined with uh, DMSO. Uh, it can be uh, combined and uh, uh, put inside a liposomal preparation that is inside a lipid vesicle. Uh, it can be used with uh, thermosensitive hydrogels or uh, an ion tophorosis that is uh, uh, basically an, uh, uh, an electrophoresis, an uh, electromotive drug delivery system for uh, the Botox to work. So uh, I have uh, a small experience of uh, using uh, Botox in my patients. Um, uh, forgive me, uh, Dr. Reddy, if uh, I can take the, uh, the trade name of the, uh, the drug. Uh, the Botox is onabotulitoxin. Uh, onabotulitoxin is basically a product of the botulinum toxin where it, is, uh, it has a specific protein structure. Adobotulitoxin is another uh, botulinum which can be used, which has a different protein structure, which can be used in human as well. Now, uh, I have only used 100 units. I have never used a patient uh, uh, a repeat injection. Uh, so, uh, there are uh, some differences in how it is used in the West and how we use it over here. So, uh, on the on the uh, endoscopic picture above. Uh, you will find that uh, they are using a flexible cystoscope which they actually use in an inverted manner and uh, they have a specific uh, uh, injectable device attached with the flexible cystoscope which has a very thin point. Over here, uh, Botox is sold by allergen. Uh, allergen supplies us with a specific intraretusor injection needle which is called an Williamson's needle. Uh, which is almost uh, an 18 gauge needle. Now these 18 gauge needles, when it goes at the subepithelial part, uh, it, it leaves quite a, quite a scar, quite a large scar, and leads to somewhat uh, a more hematuria than the uh, Western reports. So uh, it is used uh, in uh, uh, either 10 or 20, uh, equal doses, it has to be reconstituted with saline and uh, 0.5 ml of doses is uh, given uh, equally in all the quadrants. Uh, it is always, the, the trigone is always uh, left alone because those patients who had trigonal injections has the highest rate of urinary retention. <coughs> the Effects of uh, botulinum toxin are being tried, uh, the, the adverse effects of botulinum toxins are being tried to uh, uh, overcome. So uh, there are newer uh, generation uh, devices in the market. One of them is uh, radio frequency bladder denervation. Uh, what it does is uh, you put a cystoscope uh, along with a probe uh, at the trigon, beyond the trigon, which pushes the bladder down and uh, there is a specific radio frequency needle attached with it is a balloon uh, which actually denervates the bladder at places which disturbs the micro motion of the bladder and hence controls the overactive bladder. So the results are really encouraging, uh, trials are being done. Now the most important concept of neurostimulation and neuromodulation dates way back to uh, uh, first century. I mean, 
what we have here on your left hand side is a torpedo fish. Torpedo fishes are electric ray. So at those time, even at those time, it is documented that people had to, people had treatments of neurogenic pains by standing over a torpedo fish. These are electric ray. They will generate electricity. Uh, these they had to stand over the fish in a in a sea beach where uh, it was being washed with saline water. So there was continuous production of electricity, and the patients got rid of uh, headache and uh, muscular pain. The next evidence came from uh, ancient Chinese medicine, uh, acupuncture. So uh, there is one point in acupuncture known as uh, SP6 or spleen point 6 which is situated around 3 cm proximal to medial malleolus uh, at the junction of the medial border of the tibia and the soleus muscle. Uh, this is the point where the posterior tibial nerves comes to the surface. So if uh, there were ideas in acupuncture if we uh, excite the posterior tibial nerve here, uh, bladder pain can go away. So, what was the uh, basic, uh, what is the basic uh, uh, idea of doing a neuromodulation? It is not clearly explained. The difference between neuromodulation and neurostimulation is that uh, in neurostimulation you, you uh, handle a nerve directly, you, you, you affect a nerve directly, but in neuromodulation you affect a nerve which is away from your uh, point of uh, objective. So, uh, there are uh, theories where uh, there are multiple bladder brain cross crosstalk. The uh, reflex micturation centers are mostly at the midbrain, which is generally modulated and compensated by the forebrain. So uh, the uh, insular cortex, the anterior cingulate gyrus, and the prefrontal cortex all control your micturation and prevent you from passing urine in a public place. So even if your bladder are full, you find a place, a secluded place, where you can go and relieve yourself. When these areas are abnormally damaged, that is the basic pathology of overactive bladder. Why I kept uh, sacral neurostimulation after posterior tibial nerve stimulation? Because I have never seen a sacral neurostimulation, to be very honest. Sacral neurostimulation and sacral neuromodulation is not done in India. I uh, I found that it was being done in the western part of the country uh, uh, maybe a decade back but uh, now nobody does it. So the promising uh, treatment over here is posterior tibial nerve stimulation. So it's an external electrical signal sent through the posterior tibial nerve retrograde to the sacral plexus through a small needle inserted into the lower leg near the ankle. The ankle is the point SP6 which I have discussed right now. This electric current is a continuous square wave form from a du duration of 200 microseconds and a frequency of 20 hertz. Uh, it requires repetition, a 30 minute session uh, for three months or a consecutive uh, 12 sessions followed by a three monthly session. So uh, it is reported that it has a considerable improvement in the refractory OAB of uh, in a large study, 71 to 17, uh, around 80 percent patients reported response to the treatment. Uh, however, there is no statistically significant benefit to PTNS compared to tolterodine. So, these are the uh, disadvantages. So, uh, now uh, with the advantage of uh, PTNS, we gradually move to inserting a needle to a uh, permanent implantable. PTNS electrode. So these are called uh, coin electrodes which can be put inside the ankle in a pocket uh, right over the surface of the posterior tibial nerve and uh, the patient can uh, uh, the patient can be educated about the activation of the uh, electrode via Bluetooth devices. Now this is superficial transcutaneous patch electrode posterior tibial nerve stimulation. So this is, I think, the way forward. This is going to come into India. There are few centers who are doing this, who are even doing the, uh, the uh, needle percutaneous posterior tibial nerve stimulation. A few months back, uh, I don't know whether Nilanjan went there to AINU. Uh, uh, AINU labs, they have showed a live procedure of 
posterior tubule nerve syndrome. This is the most promising procedure where you do not have to put an electrode, where you do not have to put a needle, but you can use a posterior tibial nerve stimulation with a patch electrode. Next is sacral neuromodulation. The idea, the whole idea of neuromodulation is to block your afferent pathway to the brain so that the uh, discharges from brain to the efferent pathway gets modulated. So in sacral neuromodulation, uh, we generally control the, modulate the uh, S3 or S4 root uh, by placing again an uh, electrode. This electrode has an uh, external generator which is placed under a buttock pocket and uh, the electrodes are placed through the S3 sacral foramen. This, uh, this is a picture where uh, the electrode, those four dots are the four electrodes which are introduced to the S3 sacral foramen and placed just adjacent to the S3 root. Uh, it is percutaneous, it, it requires two st stages, one is the test phase and another is the uh, implantable phase. On the test phase, the electrodes are placed and there are external generators uh, which are activated uh, to see whether at least 50% improvement in the OAB symptoms are there or not. It requires a period of two to three weeks. Following that, the permanent generator is placed in the gluteal pocket. Uh, the, the, the first sign both in percutaneous tibial nerve, uh, posterior tibial nerve stimulation and in sacral neural stimulation is the stimulation of uh, flexion of your great toe and fanning out of uh, your toe fingers. The last resort of course is the augmentation enterocystoplasty and urinary diversion. Uh, sir, uh, as I have said, I have yet to see a patient who required an augmentation cystoplasty in a primary OAB. Although I have seen two patients, one later was discovered as a tuberculosis with a very small capacity bladder. The other one is a radiation cystitis, although her bleeding was controlled, but again the, uh, the bladder was so small that uh, 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 she had a miserable life. So. Uh, it is also uh, 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 has some benefit to some to some patients. Uh, bowel preparations may take place, and it's a full fledged surgery, as you all know. Uh, there are emerging therapies of newer neuromodulations where surface electrodes can be placed in other nerves, uh, uh, where uh, OAB can be controlled in refractory uh, uh, patients. Phosphodiesteric 5 inhibitors are currently approved for the uh, management of men with lower urinary tract symptoms and erectile dysfunction uh, to s and some part of secondary OAB but not on primary OAB. Parkitunous radiofrequency uh, neuroanatomy has been demonstrated as a feasible uh, patients with neurogenic detrusor overactivity secondary to spinal cord injury with significant improvement of the patient symptoms. Also. So I think in a nutshell uh, beyond drugs, beyond behavioral therapy. Uh, you have to tell the patients that, look, you have come to a neurologist, I have a very long sleeve and there are a few cards up my sleeve. So one of the sleeve, one of the card uh, in this respect is going to be a uh, uh, neuromodulation. And once this uh, patch electrode neuromodulation is uh, available in the market, uh, I think this will be the way forward for refractory OAB patients. Uh, in fact, uh, PTNS and TTNS is known as a poor man's sacral neurostimulation. So I think this is the way forward. Thank you.